Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, and today we're going to actually take what we have learned so far and apply it to create a piece of art. Uh, so I shot this picture of Michaela over the weekend, and I want to do is add some fish around it and add a little bit of color grading and so on. And I'm going to do this only with the things we have learned so far. So a very limited tool set, but I show you that you can do a lot with what we've already covered. Now, at the end of the video, I'm going to go back and I'm going to add in a little bit of a complexity and redo part of this adding in layer groups. And that is a very easy way for you to keep organized as your documents get larger and you want to become more efficient with the use of your curves, hue and saturation, and other adjustment layers when they apply to multiple layers. Uh, so I'm going to save that for the end, but I want to show you that we can do a lot with what we've covered so far. So without any further ado, let's start. So here you can see this setup for the shot. Uh, basically, I had a piece of plexiglass spanning two sawhorses, and I put a background on the floor to prevent the concrete color from coming through. And then I had her lay her back on that stool so she could rest comfortably and do all kinds of poses into the plexiglass. The light did eventually move to be more centered here in the shot. I just found it was more compelling to me. And uh, you could see a picture of her actually under the plexiglass here uh, doing her thing. Uh, so this was a lot of fun to shoot. And the idea was to just kind of come up with a little bit of a, a creepy girl trapped on the ice thing. And then I found some fish over on Unsplash. And we're going to use these fish to uh, add to the picture. So Unsplash, by the way, if you don't know, is a free stock website where professional photographers can upload their pictures for internet points or something. And uh, then you can download them and use them for whatever you would like. Uh, so this is the picture that I ended up deciding I was going to use. We're going to do a little bit of touch up with the surface. We're going to add the fish and we're going to color grade this image. At the end, as I said, we're going to come back and do some a little bit of efficiency with layer groups. But since we haven't covered that yet, I don't want to break my own rule, uh, but we will come back to it and just do a little bit of efficiency work. OK, so the first thing I want to do, like most images, is I'm going to start with a new layer. Uh, where I'm going to be working with my brushes to do some correction. And what I want to correct is some of the water spots that are stuck to the top of this. So I'm going to hit J for my healing tool. And I'm going to go and sample here and just kind of heal these spots up. You're going to see we get some dark spots every so often. Uh, that just means you got to have to redo that. Just hit the undo button and go back and uh, redo that, that sampling. Sorry if there's a little bit of background noise. Um, there's some other things going on in the house here today that I can't prevent, and I want to get this video done. Uh, so I'm just going through and sampling and just removing these using... Uh, I didn't like that one. Uh, using parts of the image that are similar in value, like we talked about in our whole lesson on using the healing brush. And she is not tack sharp in this image, which is fine. I don't care that she is uh, for what we're doing here. This is fine. I'm just borrowing, again, bits and pieces. Now, this strip here, uh, we're going to use the, the patch tool on that. Now, remember, the patch tool doesn't work if there's no data on the layer. So um, I'm actually going to flatten this. So I'm going to bring this and do a control E. Or if you want to do it old school, it's down here under merge down. And then I'm going to, again, I'm going to hit Control J to create a copy, a duplicate of this. And just use this patch tool and create a rough selection. And again, you can go back and use your Alt or Option key to remove pieces if it's a little bit uh, ugly, like my <laughs> mine was there. And then once we have what we like, we can go and pick a piece that we want to replace it with. And I think something like that might work. And it's okay if it's not perfect, uh, but it's better than it was. So what I want to do is then go back and use my healing brush to get some of the artifacts that if there are any edges that have been created. Uh, it's okay. I mean, that we, we don't expect to do everything in a single pass every time inside of Photoshop, and I'm okay with that. Uh, if you have problems with the specific tool, you know, go back and redo that area again until you're happy with it. Like this here is kind of a wreck. I don't really like it. This up here, I'm going to use the healing brush in a very large setting and just replace that snow easy peasy. I think I'm going to try the same thing here and just do some quick depths. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Just make sure I don't have something that looks like a an exact duplicate of another area that's too close. Like these three in a row look kind of suspicious, so I'll just get rid of one. That looks pretty good. Just kind of go through and again get rid of these spots. Shouldn't take very long. We don't have a lot to do with that. Still not 100% happy with this in here. I'm just going to try, let's try and grab some snow from over here then. There we go. Okay, that looks better, much better. Okay, so our before and after here. So we 
anointed. Although we did do a little bit before we got to that point, but that's okay. So we're going to use J again here, a healing brush. And uh, notice that the healing brush, when you get close to something, is when, when you get that smear that can occur. And uh, it's just it's just part and parcel of the way the system works. It's trying to be smart about things. Uh, you can play with the diffusion setting to try and get a little bit different uh, response if you'd like to, but I don't mind going back and just sampling a little bit different area and trying to do something a little bit different uh, so that I don't get the same problem. All right, that's good. Those little spots were just annoying me, and I wanted to get rid of them, so I'm much happier with this. Okay, so let's add some fish. So first of all, I'm going to just grab this with my move tool and just pick up the layer and drag it into this and let go. That is how you add a layer from another uh, tab inside of Photoshop. If you hold down your shift when you bring it in, by the way, it will it'll put it in the exact same position as it was on the other document, but I don't really care about that in this case. Now, it is coming across as just a regular layer. Uh, so I'm going to duplicate this a few times and hide these because I know I'm going to need them and I'm going to kind of wreck this one. Uh, so the first thing I do is control T, which is this, the uh, ability to modify or free transform. We've covered that already. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this down. These fish are way in the background here, so they should be tiny. And they're kind of nibbling in her arm here, maybe. Or they're coming up to her arm is what I'm imagining. So I'm going to hit enter there. And I want to make this look more like it's under the water. Now, masking this would probably be a lot of work, but luckily we've also covered the screen blending mode already, which means that anything black won't come through. Now, this looks okay, but we see this rectangle, and that's because there wasn't a pure black background for these fish. So let's go ahead and grab a curve, adjustment layer, and then I want to clip it to that fish layer. So it is only affecting those fish. We, again, we've covered that when we worked on curves. And I want to pull the black point in so that it is black. And we can see these tall, this tall spike here is the black background of this layer. So um, I want to be just on this side of it. And there we go. Now, another couple things about fish, uh, they're going to be kind of under the water there. So they are going to be a little more blue than they would normally be. But you see we get that blue is kind of forming a rectangle here. Again, we have to pull that black point back so that it's not affecting that. So now we have shifted our fish a little blue. And I think maybe even a little bit of cyan as well. So just a quick color grade for the fish to make them look more uh, realistic in the setting. But they're really bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, uh, the clip for this, and bring it down. So uh, really kind of bringing down the fish. There we go. And that looks pretty good, but they're also really sharp. And they shouldn't be. They should not be in focus uh, more than her arm. So I'm going to go back to this layer. And I have covered blur before. I'm pretty sure we have. So I'm going to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. This is probably the most common blur you're going to use. And I just kind of look at, you know, that's, I don't know, something like that. And hit OK. Now, I like this. It looks a little goofy because of the fish with their parts cut off. So I'm going to clip, click the mask icon. Hit B for brush. Make sure we're 100% flow, 100% opacity. Make it smaller. And then go back and just color out the fish that I don't want. So uh, I like that little bit of orange there. Get rid of this one. Just kind of get rid of just any distractions that I don't think are going to look good in the final image. So let's get rid of this half a fish here, half a fish here. If you make a mistake, just hit X to go back to the white brush. Say maybe we want to make this look kind of like a fish, even though it's not a full fish. Does that look legit? Looks legit to me. And if we're happy with that, then we can move on to the next one. I think those need to be blurred a little bit more. So make sure you click on your layer again, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And uh, maybe that looks good. Okay, excellent. All right, let's grab some more fish. So control T, make this smaller. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're just going to add a couple fish in over here just to make it interesting. Like right there. And we want to do the exact same thing. Now, instead of going doing these settings eight times, what I can do is actually click on the curve and hold down my Alt or Option key and drag up, and it'll create a duplicate of it and put it above, and then hold Alt or Option between the two to clip it to the mask below, or to the layer below. And then I need to change this to the screen blending mode, and I need to 
then blur my fish. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we wanted more blur. I remember last time we had to go back and blur it again. So let's just do this. And then add a mask. B for brush and go get rid of the fish that we don't want. In this case, maybe like this. Just enough to hint that there's fish there. Uh, I had heard once, and I love this phrase, is that you, if you, if you have a piece of art and a person bothers to walk all the way across the room to look at it closer, you should reward them um, with something. So in this case, it's them seeing the fish that may not be obvious from a distance when you first look at this image. So those fish are the little treat that I give you for taking the time to walk over and look at the image up close. Okay, let's do one more. And in this one, I want to borrow a fish, a single fish. I think I like this one. So we're going to go Control-T again. We're going to kind of, um, you know, actually I like this one. Maybe this one. Uh, something like this. I'm going to hit Screen so that I can see what I'm doing. V for the Move tool or hit the icon. And uh, it's too big. So we're going to Control-T and then move it down until we like the size of it something like that I, so she seems like she's looking right that direction which is why i want to put the fish there uh, so i think something like this would be good hit enter okay now for this last fish we can't use the curve we did before because that had a lot of blue and some darkness so i'm just going to create a new curve i'm going to use the clipping mask button here that's the same thing i'm going to pull that black point back so that the water itself kind of disappears and then I'm going to go and click on my mask, B for brush, and I'm going to get rid of, I can get rid of all the other fish, or why don't we just do this? Control I or Command I will invert that mask. Oops, I'm inverting the mask on the curve, by the way. Don't want to do that. We want to play with this. So I actually uh, need to put a mask with the fish. Hit Control I to turn the mask black, and then paint with a white brush and bring that fish back. If I bring back more, you know, accidentally, like I, I'm a little sloppy here and I bring back extra fish, just hit X again to paint black on your mask. And that is my mask. And you can see it's super accurate. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't matter. You know, as long as only the things you want are visible or visible, it doesn't matter what the mask looks like. Just got to be careful that there's not too much going on there. Okay, is that fish look like it's too sharp? maybe so I'm gonna click on the make sure you're clicking on the picture of the fish and not the mask because these are different things you can blur a mask by the way um, that's kind of a more advanced technique but at some point that does help if you run into certain situations but uh, just you know bring that up so here I'm gonna go filter blur Gaussian blur and that is way too much so we're just gonna go a little bit maybe something like so, so you see like oh hey that looks real then you know you nailed it that looks pretty decent to me and there we go okay and i'm just looking down here are these two distracting um i think i think they're okay uh this fish might need a little bit more blur maybe now that i kind of back up and look at it so i'm gonna undo undo what i just did and do filter blur gaussian blur again and pick a different setting and go a little bit more aggressive with it mm. I'm, I'm just looking at her finger being in focus and her eye kind of being in focus. And I'm trying to find an area between the two. And maybe I do like this better. Something like that. Okay. Now let's color grade this a bit. So I'm going to add another curve on top of this. And uh, we're just going to go and goof with the colors a bit. So a little bit of blue because it's a wintry scene. Um, I like the, um, the blue everywhere, especially in the shadows. That's like one of my favorite places to put it. If we go back to the RGB, maybe we want to lift those shadows a bit so that um, more of this becomes visible. Something like this, a little bit of a curve. And is there any cyan we want to introduce? Remember the red goes this way and cyan goes this way, so maybe a little cyan would help sell the winterness. Now because we're doing this operation against all these other elements we've added to the image, it really helps sell they are shot together. So the more operations you can really do to multiple pieces in a composite, the easier it is to, to sell them as, as one piece. So I think that looks pretty decent. And I do see this up here uh, that I don't like. So I'm going to go up there. I'm going to do control or just my J and I'm just going to heal that snow over so we don't see those bright spots. Uh, bright spots that touch the edge of the canvas tend to distract the eye more than bright spots in the middle of the canvas. 
and I don't want to just draw, draw the eye of the viewer. So I'm just going to get rid of a couple of these little pieces of snow that I'm finding annoying. There we go. That looks very good. So now I'm very happy with that. So now let's make this a little bit more efficient. So we have all these curves that we kept applying to all these fish. So uh, we've made this piece of art and, and now we're done. Uh, let's, so this is our, our color grading. And I want to take all the fish that we've added and, and put them in a folder so I can keep track of them easier. So we can do that by holding down shift and clicking across all these. Uh, once you have one layer selected and you hold down shift, you can select a bunch of them and go down and hit the folder icon and it will move them all into that group. You used to have to hold down shift to move those in, but that has changed now. By default, it just grabs anything that's highlighted and puts it in the folder and we can call this fish. What's nice about this layer is we can turn it on and off to turn all the fish on or off. Now we do have a, a bunch of curves here that we've used multiple times and it's these fish here, the ones that are really under the water. So I'm gonna create another group and these are lower fish. And this was our upper fish here. There we go. And I could create a, a group of these two, um, but I don't tend to group two layers uh, because the this layer is clipped to this one. I don't really have to worry about them wandering around and getting separated. If I want to make sure these fish always stay the same equidistant apart, that's what this icon is for down here. And when you hit V now to move them, you see they move together. Um, if you want to temporarily undo that, you can hold shift and click on that and then you can move one. Oops, I both have, I still have both of them highlighted. Um, I can move one now and adjust it and then go back and shift click again and undo that. So that's this ability to temporarily uh, undo things works with masks as well as just the shift key. Uh, very handy, but this linking ability to link layers together so they move together without being in the same folder because you can move a folder too. The exact same technique works. We can also add a mask to this group or to this folder and now anything under the folder would be masked, which means we could get rid of these masks that are on the fish individual fish layers if we wanted to and have one mask for everything in the folder. We can also clip things like adjustment layers. We could move a curve up top here and clip it to this and then all those these curve layers could be removed because remember these are the same curve. So we can make this a lot more efficient. I'm not gonna do that today. That overcomplicates things a bit, uh, but I do wanna let you know about these folders because they're very handy for keeping track of things, especially if you have a big stack of things. Uh, just being able to move things into a group like that is so handy. All right, so that kind of concludes what we've covered so far. And uh, again, it's gonna get more complicated. So if you had trouble with this one, please go back and review the previous episodes and let me know if you have any questions or comments or if I lost you somewhere. I mean, most of what we covered, I think we covered everything that we used in this video so far. So there shouldn't be any confusion, but if there is, please let me know and I will catch you next time.